Welcome to Episode 4 of the Curious Matter Anthology. I'm Jonathan Pezza, the creator and host of the series. If this is your first time joining us, you are in for a fun ride. And to all our returning fans, thanks for being a part of the Curious Matter Legion. This episode kicks off our biggest and most expansive story to date, and is part of our very first mini-series event. Some stories take only an episode or two to tell, but in order to do this next one the justice it deserves, we needed to do something special. As our first sojourn into the realms of science fiction, we are bringing you a tale from one of the true masters of the genre. Philip K. Dick's influence on the universe of science fiction is undeniable. Film and television adaptations such as Blade Runner, Man in the High Castle, Minority Report, and Total Recall, just to name a few, have grossed more than $1.4 billion internationally at the box office. Our story, Second Variety, was first published in May of 1953. Set during the events of a globally catastrophic nuclear war, Second Variety exemplifies the dark imagination and sense of realism that made Dick's work so unique amongst contemporaries like Heinlein, Asimov, and Bradbury. This story takes a modern look at the challenges of using combat drones and AI technologies in the battlefield of tomorrow, and asks the question, what happens when our weapons become smarter than we are? Do rampaging warrior robots sound familiar? That's because Second Variety is widely accepted as one of the seminal influences for James Cameron's Terminator. Futurism comes in many forms. Science fiction is often about the grand and alien places technology will someday take us. But for Philip Kindred Dick, I think it was about taking a deep look inside ourselves and contemplating what technology does to the human soul. Is its effect toxic? Is it elevating? Or is it some curious and undefinable mixture of both? This episode of Curious Matter is rated explicit and includes adult language and violence comparable to an R-rated film. Our show is designed to be a completely immersive HD audio experience, and it is at its best when played through high-quality stereo speakers or headphones. So, without further delay, grab your popcorn, turn out the lights, and enjoy this epic tale of war, brotherhood, and of course, robots. OP2, TAC-5. This is actual TAC-5. Go, OP2. Sector 2, clear. Copy, Sector 2, clear. Third platoon's Oscar Mike to relieve. Copy, whistle actual. It's about fucking time. Think they'll have something other than that vet slop in the mess? We got the drop today. Does a body good, right? Not this body. Well, what's the difference? It's all the same shit. Yeah, but at least the D-rations look like the real thing. You have any idea how many cons I'd shank for one real burger? Only way you're getting beef is if that shit is glowing. A girl can dream. Fuck. Tango, Ridge 4. Hoorah. About time. Scope's up. Got him. This is OP2. Enemy sighted. I repeat, we have a Tango on Ridge 4. One foot mobile. He appears to be an SRE regular. One click and close and permission to engage. OP2, hold your fire. We've had reports of defectors all along the Eastern 80. Does Tango appear hostile? I got him Lays. 900 meters. He's moving pretty fast. Point audio's up. It looks like he's waving us off. I think he said, hold your fire. He's a con. OP2, does target appear hostile? You heard them, he might be a defector. Shut up, Leon, I'm trying to think. He's trying to wave us off. He threw down his weapon. Whistle actual, this is OP2. We are taking fire. I, I repeat, we are taking fire. Hey, asshole, what are you doing? Requesting permission to engage. That's a negative. Stand down. We've relayed his position to Claws. Actual, I have them in my sights. Permission to engage. Negative OP2. Intercept in seven, six. I got two type five, fours incoming from four, the east. Three. Man, those things two, are fast. One. Contact. We have to be Fuck! You are a piece of shit. You know that, Petraka? Actual. Visual confirmation of kill. Copy, OP2. We're gonna need you to recon the remains for ident tags, then RTB for debrief. Copy that, actual. We're Oscar Mike. Hey, Petraka. 
That sounded like a Type 4. We missed the action? Man, Claus just swacked a con out near the fence line. Man, I always miss the fun. About time you two showed up. This mess should have been yours. They got spaghetti and bat balls again. Better hoof it while it's hot. Nah, I gotta go fetch that meat bag's ID tag. If I had a fucking time machine, you know what I would do? Go back and kill the pole march to keep the SRE from nuking half the planet? Fuck no. Then there's no war. Yeah. I fucking love war. It's the claws I can't stand. I'd go back and find the limp dick, four-eyed, good-for-nothing pogue that first thought up the coordinated logistics autonomous weapon system, and I'd strangle that asshole in the cradle. Petraka, just shut up and walk, okay? Self-replicating, self-repairing, self-upgrading, fully automated combat drones? Who thought that was a good idea? What's the point of being in the shit if something else gets to do all the shooting? All the everything? I mean, what good is a Marine that doesn't get to kill anything? A waste of UN tax dollars, that's what. Not to mention thousands of hours of the most nefarious, steely-eyed, mind-body and heart-hardening, devil-dog-generating, twisted-soul-stealing training that has ever been forced on an unsuspecting boot. I am a diamond-sharp, titanium-tough, laser-eyed reaper of motherfucking death. And now all I ever get to do is sit on my ass and watch Twitchy get all the fucking KOs. We're here. God damn, the Type 4s don't leave much, do they? This guy is fucking sausage. Gonzos. No way for a soldier to die. At least a bullet is a dignified way to buy it, but this shit I got is... his tag. Looks like he was carrying this, too. A marked envoy packet? Yeah. Did I tell you you're an asshole yet? Whistle actual. Returning to base. What's up with the toaster? Never seen a Type 4 hang around after the slicing dice. Maybe the weirdo is sweet on you. You never had a dog growing up? A freaky, metal, hamster ball-shaped dog? Nah. Where I grew up, we ate all the dogs. I had a Roomba once, though. Set it on fire. That explains so much. Hey, scram. Fuck off back to wherever you twitchies go. Looks like someone just got themselves a pet claw. Hey, trash can. I said fuck off. Can you get me confirmation on this? All these sad images of the AO are weeks old. Hendrix, can someone point me to Major Hendrix? Yes, sir. I'll see if OCOM can relay new ones. Thank you. This is a restricted area. It's off limits to civvies. I have a badge. Uh, priority one clearance. I, I need to speak with Major Hendrix. Let him through. Go on. I'm Hendrix. What can I do for you? Ken Oda. I'm with Orbital R&D. A skunkworks boy. We don't get a lot of lab coats on the line. Uh, I, I, I hit dirt this morning. What can I do for you? If OCOM flew you first class all the way to the 80 yard line, must be a good reason. I, is it true that you're sending a patrol into SRE territory? Leading a patrol as it happens. We received a damaged optical memory car from an SRE envoy. Apparently the cons want to negotiate. Well, what did the envoy know when you interrogated him? He was too dead to say. I have a briefing in two minutes. Walk with me. Are you aware that we've been in a blackout now for the last six weeks, three days, and 21 hours? Are you talking SAT coverage? Is that why we haven't received any of the new troop positions I've requested? Geonet, optics, the ODS, everything is down. Well, that's why they pay you boys the big bucks, right? Fix it. Don't make much difference to us. OCOM tells us to hold the line, we hold the line. Everything else is just situation normal. Well, that's just it. Everything appears to be working. All the diagnostics come back green, but we are locked out of this system. We've been working the problem 24 seven. Uh, they have everyone trying to come up with a fix. Not everyone. You're here with us, Mr. Uda. It's Oda. Uh, well, ha have you been able to communicate with the autonomous weapon system to call in fire missions? The network, as you said, has been down for weeks. We thought it was our transmitter, so we jury rigged a VHF type beam using an old cell phone tower. And that works? We call. And Twitchy shows up. T Twitchy? A loving nickname for your weapon system. I need to go with you on your patrol. That's out of the question. The last thing I'm going to do is take responsibility over a civvy and con's front yard. Well, Major Hendricks. Look, this has been a lovely chat. 
But right now I need to explain to 16 servicemen and women who have somehow managed to survive the shit show of a war that instead of sitting back and watching as your remote controlled toys mop up what's left of the enemy, they have to hoof it 60 miles into enemy territory on a wild goose chase. And do you know why they have to walk instead of riding in one of those $60 million troop carriers parked outside? Because Geonet is down. That's right. None of you geniuses thought it might be a good idea to put in a driver's seat. I have priority one clearance. I can read the name tag. Yeah. Well, I thought this means that I have override authority. Did I miss something? Ocom said- When was the last time you stepped foot in North America? I, I haven't been planet side in five years, 11 months. They sent you up early. Four days after the first wave. Look, Major, I, I need to go with you. It's imperative. Ten hut, CO on deck. Fire! At ease, everyone. I'm sure you've heard the rumors. They were going on a suicide mission into a contract so some asshole can get another star on his lapel? Police that shit, Prostack. No, it's all right. Private Prostack, right? It very well may be a ploy by the SRE, but OCOM thinks we have no other choice than to see for ourselves. At 1800 yesterday, we received an optical data chip in a marked Envoy packet from local SRE command. The chip was damaged, but what we were able to recover appeared to be a rendezvous point and a request for a policy level officer to meet under flag of truce. Eye in the sky has been down for six weeks, but our latest intel suggests that Claws has been scoring critical hits on priority targets all along the line. Our best guess is that the Sina Russians are on the back foot with much of their chain of command in disarray. Our target is an SRE outpost in what used to be an airport 62 miles north near Ann Arbor, or whatever's left of it. We are doing this on foot and without on-call fire support. Full battle rattle, boys and girls. Two days in, and then after the meet, two days out. We aren't completely alone out there, however. Claws sent type three, so at least you won't have to hump your own gear. We are too far along in this thing to take any unnecessary risks. We do this by the numbers and get home. The possibility of brokering even a regional surrender is a baited hook the UN is going to take a big old bite of. And ladies and gentlemen, second platoon x-ray company is that fish. Oorah, oorah. That's what I like to hear. Folks, it's been ass grabbing and suntans for the last five months since the toasters went active. But square that shit and put on your war faces. It's time to show the cons what a real Marine looks like. If this does end up going pear-shaped, rely on your training and the grunt on your right. They will not fail you. On the flip side, if we are able to achieve our objective, this mission could mark the end of the war in North America. Get your rest tonight. That's an order. Oh, and I've authorized five minutes for each of you in the comm center. If you have someone, call them. That will be all. Dismissed. Steven? Sorry, it's been so long. Hey, Sarah. They're sending us on a mission. I can't talk about it, but I might be coming home soon. Things are getting worse in the slums. The gangs come day after day. Yeah, I'll send more money when I can. It's been so long since I've seen home. What would I even do? You'd live. Everything else will take day by day. Just come home to us. Hello? Allison? Rebecca? Hi. Hi. I know we agreed I shouldn't. I'm, I'm glad you did. It's, it's nice to hear your voice. How was the munchkin? 12 and impossible. He stole a neighbor's bike. Had to barter away a month's soap to keep it from the authorities. I was a terror at that age. I remember. He's more and more like you every day. Hmm. Are you still there? Did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Is something wrong? Did something happen? No, I just needed to hear you. To, to remember what was waiting. I, I have to go, I'll, well. It's okay, just be safe out there.
Like any business, it takes a lot to put together a podcast. You need a website, a logo, someone to write your ad copy, and you might even occasionally need to figure out what a killer robot shaped like a soccer ball sounds like. Thank the lucky stars, there's Fiverr. Fiverr is the world's largest freelance services marketplace. Do you need graphic design? They can help you find the perfect designer. Website creation? Check. Marketing services? Check. They can even find someone to help you edit your podcast. Get the help you need and support Curious Matter at the same time by going to the affiliates page on our website, www.curiousmatterpodcast.com slash affiliates, and clicking the link. We hope you are enjoying the podcast. We are committed to bringing you amazing experiences in the worlds of science fiction, fantasy, and supernatural horror. Help Curious Matter keep going by subscribing for free on the podcast platform of your choice and rating us with five stars today. If you like the podcast, leave us a review and connect with us on Podchaser or Radio Public. It really does make all the difference. This show is lovingly produced in my basement in Reseda, California. Each episode can take as much as 100 hours to produce, and we can't do it without your help. So, if you can, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash curious matter, where you can get access to bonus content, ad-free downloads of the podcast, and even a shout-out on the show. Thank you for spending your time with us. And now, the conclusion to Second Variety Part 1. Whistle actual attack by X-Ray, X-Ray. Copy, X-Ray. Go ahead. We're passing the last marker now. Copy that, X-Ray. We have you passing boundary marker 4. Radio jamming is likely beyond this grid square. Don't have too much fun without us. We'll keep that under advisement, X-Ray, and look forward to hearing from you in a few days. Happy hunting. You looking a little green around the gills there, Professor? You aren't gonna puke, are you? Exo mop suit takes a couple days to get used to, but then you'll feel right as rain. <laughs> I'll be all right. It's just been a, a while since I've had to exert myself like this. I just need a second to catch my breath. They say nothing kills you faster than sitting at a desk and staring at a screen all day. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. What about a Con 70 mic mic? That'll dust you pretty frickin' quick. Don't mind him. That ball of sunshine over there with the big scar was unlucky enough to pull Natosian out of the name hat. Makes him surly. Uh, well, nice to meet you. The lovely lady over there, humping the big stick, is our resident Deadeye Corporal Mookie Leone. Just Leone is fine. And last but not least, that sulky whiskey tango motherfucker over there is Petraka. He's not usually this quiet. Hey, what bug crawled up your ass, Petraka? Nothing, Sarge. Spit it out, Private. It's the toaster. They just creep me out, is all. You rather be humping your own pack? He had a close encounter the other day. Gonzo tried to give him a kiss. Really? Was it a Type 3 mule model like this one? What, what did it do? You know, I actually did quite a bit of design work on the V1s. These have quite a few improvements over my model, though. You built these things? Well, I, I helped. You know, for the most part, they actually build themselves. You should be ashamed of yourself. Not this again. The system was designed to save lives. Not my life. That's enough, Petraka. Play nice with our guest. You should be on your knees thanking this guy, Petraka. We were about this close to getting curb stomped by the cons before Twitchy showed up. Says who? Ocom? Says anyone with actual hair on their balls, Rook. Get off me! Cool it, Nato. Petraka, get back on our flank. Is it true they built the prototypes on the moon? Well, it's... <sighs> classified. Who are we gonna tell? I really can't divulge. You know, it's not really a smart idea to piss off the only people between you and a con bullet. I'm not talking about myself, of course. I mean, I wouldn't shank you in your sleep or anything, but we do know Petraka over there already doesn't like you. Uh, uh, uh. UN High Command, VIPs, and other essential personnel were moved to Artemis Station early in the war. The ID attacks took out most of the First World infrastructure, so the UN fell back to the one place the SRE couldn't hit us. This is really something you can't tell anyone. Holy shit, it's true? Whoa, 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 you gave in that easy? Oh, you, you said- Dude, don't they give you guys interrogation training? No, they don't really let us out much. Hey, Roasted. What? High command is on the fucking move. Bullshit. No, seriously, the professor over here just spilled the beans. No shit. Hey, Pressman, did you hear this? Don't worry, Professor. In all likelihood, this mission is an elaborate trap, and we'll all get schwacked long before any of us has a chance to spill it to the cons. 
So your secrets probably say 75 percent. 85 at least. 85 percent safe. Settle up, folks. Squad three spotted an enemy position two clicks northeast on the outskirts of a town called Adrian. It appears to be abandoned, but we're going to give it a wide berth. Ah, uh, Major, Major Hendricks. Yes, Mr. Oda. I need you to redirect us back through Adrian. Why would I do that? There isn't going to be any enemy in that town. It was a regional type one drop point. If there was an SRE presence there, they are long dead. Either way, why should I risk it? It may help me in figuring out how to get Geonet back online. What do you think, Lieutenant Scott? That would mean access to combat support and sky optics if all this turns to shit. Might be worth it. X-ray, S2 has eyes on the town center. All clear to move up. Thank you, Squad 2. All teams, move up and secure the square. Move up, move up. Go, go, go! This is Leon on Overwatch. All clear to the west. Stay frosty, people. Team two, get that alley covered. Copy. Alley secure. X-ray, east corner secure. All teams, hold positions. X-ray, this is Pro Stack. You're not gonna believe this, but I think I just saw a kid in the rubble. Don't shoot the first thing that moves. We left a lot of refugees behind when our forces withdrew to the 80. Sergeant Marks, escort Mr. Oda up here. He needs to see this. I think we found your Type 1s. I don't understand. They're empty. Looks like the SRE may have a few notches on their belts from the looks of these. Let me get this straight. Those are Type 1s, the mobile factories that build all the others. They look like cargo trucks someone stripped for parts. They call their mothers. Well, someone effed their shit up. Shut it, you two. Eyes on the roofs. All 12 superstructures are here, but these weren't attacked. They were salvaged down to the last usable component. So the SRE has managed to disable these and strip them for parts? No. Claws dismantled these themselves. The question is, is where do the mothers go? I'm not following. Are you saying this isn't supposed to happen? Well, that's just it. We didn't program them to do this, but then they are designed to be creative. Can you translate that to something a little closer to English for us, Grunts? These Type 1s are dropped from orbit, right? And then deploy all four of the other types. The Warbirds, Small Assault, and Heavy Assault types, and Mules, like this one here. But once they offload their V1 complement, the real task begins. They become the hub of the entire system. Type 1s are, at their core, mobile AI-operated molecular printers. They can take salvaged components and recycle them into medium for printing new units. The mother types build, upgrade, and repair all the others. They decide all future design characteristics themselves in the interest of achieving their hardwired core objectives. <laughs> if they dismantled themselves like this, it means that they decided to modify themselves into some other form factor than this mobile chassis we built for them. So the system decided to change the design of the mothers. Well, um, the system didn't do anything. Each unit is a wholly independent individual. All decision-making, tactical, strategic, logistic, everything is made independent of any type of command and control. They aren't even networked in the traditional sense. And we had to make sure they were unhackable. We couldn't risk the SRE finding a way into the system. Our solution was independent thought without any type of remote instruction. How do you control them? We don't. They adhere to their hard-coded objectives. And once those are complete, they shut down. It follows consensus logic. It's... It's essentially blockchain. Every unit streams out its sensory data to the others via an encrypted QE band, giving each individual drone complete situational awareness. If a unit sees another unit make a logical choice based on the data, it will likely do the same. There's no command structure? That sounds like a dangerous way to wage war. But it worked. Combat efficacy is off the charts. So, where'd they go? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? This is all very interesting, but why are we here, Mr. Oda? Well, the Type 1s are hard-coded to send reports with action summaries and new unit data. Which you are no longer receiving due to the blackout, I take it? The last communication we received before everything went down was from right here. Why would OCOM send you all the way out here just to investigate a signal? Come here. Take a look at this Type 3. 
The mothers are required to issue a serial number for each upgrade and new unit. If you look at the underside here, you can read the plate. Variety 1, version 3.1, revision 9. The last communication we received contained a data file for a new, previously unknown, hard fork in design methodology. New units with a two prefix in their serial numbers. A new variety of clause units. We pinged them back with a request for full design specs. Then everything went dark. Hoda, get back! X-ray, X-ray, this is S2. Our mule just dumped gear and is bugging out west, sir. This one too. What should we do, sir? Incoming! Contact! Enemy contacts, these. We have a problem here. Looks like a full company. Scratch one. Take cover. Call out targets and casualties. We need to make a retreat to the west. Prostax hit. He's gone. Tango is closing from the east. There are a whole hell of a lot of them. We have another group of foot mobiles approaching from the west. They're gonna box us in if we don't move. Our gear and ammo. Team two, grab what you can from your mule's load. Copy. Team three, lay down suppressing fire and prepare to withdraw north through the shopping complex. Oda, with me. Oh, uh. Put these on. Your exo mop will make adjustments for the extra weight. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Major, we need to move. This will have to be enough. Let's go. Cover is fire. Team 1 and Team 2 is inside with us, but Team 3 is cut off. Team 3 on me. X-Ray. We're gonna have to find another way around. I'm sending a new route to your HUD. There appears to be a highway overpass on the far side of the parking structure. Regroup there. First on site. Post up to defend the causeway with enfilading fire as the rest cross. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. First time getting shot at, Carl? Yes. Yeah. You ever fire a gun? In Boyx... In Boy Scouts, when I was a kid, we went to the range. Once. See? I knew I liked you. I was a scout, too. This is an M31 caseless reflex personal sidearm. No kick like the old guns. Just slide in the mag, point, and shoot. I don't, I don't know if I can do this. Don't worry, I got you. Just tuck in on my six and try and stay low once we're outside. And if you see a con, point, breathe, and squeeze. Got it? I, I I think so. We could use a few of your pet robots to take the heat off our asses right about now. Any idea what spooked the mules? No. I told you, they were never on our side. No. Nah, they just don't like you, Petrock. Don't look so scared, Professor. We're Marines. We'll keep you right as rain. Ramirez, report. Ramirez, report. X-ray. We had to cut east. Downer just dragon ball and me. Lumen Briggs took an enemy frag. Ah, get down! Looking for another route. Move on. We'll catch up. Frag out! Major, they have us cut off! Medic. We can't stay here, sir. We're about to be overrun. If we go back, we'll get caught between both enemy units. The only way is through. We got more tangos! Move. Team one, use grenades to cover our retreat. Frag out, frag out. Okay, let's move, move, move. Get up, Professor. Shorty here just saved our bacon. I never fired my gun. 
Okay, everyone, Oscar Mike. Go, go, go. We're getting the hell out of here. Quickly. We need to go this way. There's a secret tunnel that can take you to the other side of town. How far? Not far. Come. We really owe you, kid. My name is David. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of Second Variety Part 1. It was dramatized, directed, and edited by me, your host, Jonathan Pezza. Additional sound engineering by Jeremy Pezza. Our ensemble cast included the talented voices of Sandeep Parikh, Kelly Don Hancock, Leonid Andronov, Alexandra Amick, Christopher Amick, Melissa Starr Cummings, Darren Cummings, Philip Gray, Matt Hoban, Alexander Mercado, Maggie Mercado, Mayuko Nakamura, Brandy Cuevas Pezza, Jeremy Pezza, Jonathan Pezza, and Stephen Pezza. The score was provided by Epidemic Music. Sound effects were provided by SoundSnap.com. Second Variety is a work in the public domain and was produced in accordance with U.S. copyright law. Curious Matter is a production of Jonathan Pezza Inc., copyright 2020, all rights reserved. If you have a question or feedback about the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. So reach out to Jonathan at CuriousMatterPodcast.com or check us out online for more information at www.CuriousMatterPodcast.com. If you love the podcast, you can learn even more online. Each episode page on the website includes a blog article with additional information about the story, links to interesting historical information, and suggested reading and viewing to continue the experience. Here on Curious Matter, we dedicate each episode to a used bookstore. This one goes out to the Don Treader Bookshop in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You can find them at 514 East Liberty Street and check out their collection of over 70,000 used, rare, and collectible titles. And you can even take a selfie with their full-sized Egyptian sarcophagus. You never know what may lurk inside. Do yourself a favor and look them up online at facebook.com slash Bookshop. Or better yet, if you live nearby, go for a visit and buy a book. Coming up on the next episode of Curious Matter, X-Ray Company's adventure continues in Second Variety Part 2. So make sure to subscribe for free today, and thank you for listening. <laughs>